think it's 10.30, so I'm going to start. Good morning. I was meant to uh, learn how to say good morning in Swedish because this is my fifth visit and third time I speak. So I thought it's time to know how, at least how to say good morning. But I forget. I'm sorry. But I know how to say tak. So at 10 past 11, I'll be saying tak. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, the other thing I want to mention is um, in my past two conferences, I had my surface crashing five minutes in a talk and five minutes before a talk. It didn't do anything this morning, so expect my surface to crash anytime soon, just so you know. <laughs> um, my name is Rabeb. I am a developer advocate. I work for a company called Nexmo. We uh, do telecommunication APIs like um, SMS and voice. Uh, this slide has really nothing to do with the talk, but we've been winning things lately, and I'm so proud of the team, and I decided to put this slide on all my talks for at least the next 10 years or so, because <laughs> now I am a... Uh, a word winning developer advocate. <laughs> Just kidding. Right. Enough talking about the humans. Let's talk about bots. So, um, ideally, what we want is um, as a developer, you could be just a hobbyist and you were working on your own side projects and you want to build a bot, or you could be a business that would like to invest in this field, which is like um, very trendy now, and every other big business has a bot, so why not creating bots? So the idea is that we create bots and then we hope that users will use these bots, and when the user uses the bot, we are also hoping that the user would like this bot. And we keep our users because they are happy. So what we <coughs> sorry. So what we really want is to look for that happy path to the happy user experience, considering that bots are fairly different from the traditional uh, application, whether it is on web, desktop, or mobile. So if we look to traditional applications, um, I have, like, as an example here, uh, a website, but it could be um, a mobile app or a desktop app. Traditionally, we have screens and pages, and on these screens and pages, we have like uh, menus, we have buttons, we have search boxes, text boxes, and that's how the user gets to interact with the application. That's how the user gets to find its way on how to use the application and ultimately um, achieving goal. But in the case of bots, think of the digital assistants, for example, Alexa. We have no buttons, we have no uh, visual uh, screen to look at. All we have is a conversation. All we have are the messages. And that's why we talk about conversational UI and conversational AI, because um, in this new era, all we have is a conversation. It's a bunch of messages between the application, which is in this case the bot, and the user. So how can we um, create a good user experience without having all those uh, traditional UI elements that the user is so used to? How can just a simple message, whether it is um, voice or text, is enough to make uh, the user happy. That's why, as I said, with bots we talk about um, the aim is to have a conversation flow that, is, that feels so natural. That's why we don't even talk about conversational UIs anymore, because we want conversational AIs, we want them smart, we want them to sound like a humans to behave as if they are humans. We want an experience that is seamlessly and smooth. Right. 
So the conversation flow, let's look at some code now on how we can uh, design and develop the conversation flow using the uh, Microsoft bot framework. <laughs> so, like many other things Microsoft is doing right now, they are changing things. Um, initially, the bot framework was um, a separate um, product. You just go and use Microsoft Bot Framework, but then they decided they wanted to be part of their uh, cloud offering. So it is part of Azure. We talk about uh, Azure Bot services. With um, the old uh, Bot SDK, the Bot Builder V3, so if you do want to develop bots using the uh, Bot Framework, you need to uh, add, uh, install the template on your Visual Studio. So you still need to do that step. You install the template on Visual Studio and you also need to install the emulator to be able to test locally. Um, V3, which is, um, I would say the most stable maybe. Uh, V3 uh, uses uh, .NET framework. Now they introduced V4, which uses uh, .NET Core. Uh, with V4, there is uh, also a V4 emulator, and they are fairly different. So uh, the, uh, you can't even do like the, the migration from V3 to V4, the emulators, it's not automatic. So you can't just see, oh, this is an old version updated. I think it's a still a work in progress. Even... Um, even on the official documentation on Microsoft, uh, you will find usually you, you go to read something and it will say this documentation is for V4. If you are interested in V3, click here and go here. So they are really different. I'm not sure what's the, um, what's the future plan. Um, how much they are keeping, how long they are keeping the V3 before they completely ditch it, but definitely now they are keeping both of them. That being said, they also recommend if you are new and just starting to write bots, it's better to start with V4. So I'm assuming that there will be a pon point where uh, V3 will disappear. So, if you do want to start and work with uh, V4, this is some of the things that happened to me. So these are things that I have to search for. Um, when I went to install the extension for Visual Studio for V4, it did install, it all ha was happy until I wanted to use that template and it was like, oh, but this is empty, there is something wrong with it. So if you do want to um, install the template, despite the fact that there is a, a direct link from the documentation, don't do it there, go to Visual Studio and look for your templates, online templates, and it will appear. Uh, it is bot SDK builder v4, it will say v4. And the reason why, because it gets confused with uh, the .NET Core um, 2.1. So the, um, it will be trying to, um, to use a v4 template, but you will have still targeting the .NET framework and it, it gets all like, no, this is not the way this works. With the uh, new emulator as well, the first time it wasn't sending messages at all. So, uh, da, 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 da. so this is the new one, and this is the old one. They are fairly different, but not that much different. So when you send the text, the first time it was saying just, oh, I can't send this, um, I can't send at all. And the reason why be is because, uh, I don't want to do that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the reason for that is uh, I think Ngrok gets confused. So you need to restart your machine and by restarting the machine, it should work, but it didn't work in my case. 
and I had, I just had to restart the emulator, and it was all working. It's just like the few little things that stops you from starting any Hello World project thing. So I thought I'll put these here just in case you want to do that. You will probably. And these screenshots, as you can see, they are from um, the documentation. So um, Microsoft is expecting people to <laughs> have these problems. And this is uh, one of the issues on their uh, documentation GitHub repo. So it's people have been dealing with that. OK. So, back to design now. Uh, back to design, but the first important thing is that first interaction, which is in a way important even for a traditional application because that's the first time the user is uh, using the app. Um, either they like it or they leave because it's a horrible, um, you know, it's a horrible experience. If I'm trying to use an application and the first screen um, freezes or I can do some easy login stuff, obviously I will lose interest and go elsewhere. Same thing with bots. So the first screen is really important. And remember, it's all messages. So the first message is important. Um, this is just me playing quickly, but what happens here is, um, I think last week, I really did wake up very tired, and the first thought I had in my mind is, I wish Alexa can make me a coffee because I can't move from bed. So, um, in that first interaction with the bot, if you start with a very generic, hello, how can I help you? It is not recommended because this is very generic and you can have users like me who will answer this, oh, make me a coffee. And the bot will get confused because as far as I know, they can't make coffees yet. So depending on the context and on what you're doing, um, maybe you need to guide the user a little bit more. So instead of, hello, how can I help you? Um, maybe something like, hello, would you like me? And give them a menu of things. Would you like me to book you a flight? Or would you like me to cancel your booking? And the user is guided in that direction? Or if you don't, um, if you don't want to go um, the menu route or if your bot doesn't really require that if like you don't really have like this kind of options uh, maybe be more explicit on um, what you're saying so maybe clarify what's the task of the bot hello um, can i help you search for something from the web so the user knows exactly um, what's happening in there We don't really need to look at this because I just put them in case things go wrong. But if I go back to Visual Studio, right, okay, is that small? Oh my god, I don't know my shortcuts. <laughs> right, let's see, uh, is that any better? That's uh, huge, okay, right. Um, so, first of all, um, a bot project is a, a web app pr project. So, it has the same structure. If you are familiar with uh, maybe uh, ASP.NET projects, it, it looks very familiar. Uh, this is V3, so it looks like an ASP.NET <laughs> web project. This is V4 which if you look here, it looks more uh, like a core, an ASP core project. And um, the other thing I want to mention is with V4, so with V4, when you say, oh, I want to uh, work on um, a, a bot project, it will by default, because it, it will give you the structure uh, and the template by default, it will by default give you two projects. One of them is the um, called the basic bot, and the other one is the echo bot. So they are like uh, 
code samples in there just to show you how to start the echo bot, you type something and the bot would say, you just said this, this, and this. But for some reason, so far, the template would give you the two projects. So just keep what you need and delete the, um, the other bit. Ready. Okay. Um, few concepts with the conversation and bots. So with bots, we talk about activities. And activities is all these kind of conversations and the flow happening in between. Um, it could be uh, messages. So if the activity is of a type message, the message is the user input. That's messages. It could be of type um, system inputs, um, error, uh, detecting keyboard or detecting uh, who joined the conversation. So that's the activities and we talk about dialogues. So the whole conversation goes through dialogues. We have the root dialogue which is think of it as maybe your main screen and whenever you need to add to the conversation these are going to be different kinds of dialogues as well. And then every time you receive a message, you intercept the message in the message uh, controller and you say, when I'm receiving this, this is what I want to happen. So in this simple app, what I'm doing is, Whenever I eat a cake, I feel guilty about it, and I <laughs> honestly, and I text my personal trainer or send him a picture of the cake. For some reason, I think that's like to ease off the guilt. And <laughs> he texted me once saying, I don't think I want to encourage this. Stop texting me all these cakes pictures. And I felt a bit, you know, a bit hurt. And I'm like, fine, I will create my own bot and I'll talk to the bot about all my cakes, which is what I'm doing for this demo, literally. So back to that first interaction. So the first interaction, because we want the bot to welcome the user. We don't just want the user to type first, because unless the user says something, the application will never figure out it's a message. But we want that like lovely, nice experience of, hello, how can I help you? To do that, we handle the message as a system message. So in here, in this task, handle system messages. We do have different uh, types of activities, as I said, delete user maybe, uh, conversation update, uh, typing, uh, pinging, uh, relation update. Because think, um, think of the bot, um, it's not just what I was showing. It could be a whole conversation on Slack, for example. So it could be a group of users. It doesn't have to be just one person. It is a conversation. So different members could join the conversation. For that first interaction, for that first hello, what I'm using is the conversation update. Because um, once I fire up uh, the um, wherever you're testing, like for me, I use the emulator, which is very similar to the web chat part of Azure, if you're using the portal. Once I open the app in there, like opening the app is considered as a conversation update because, oh, we're gonna start a conversation. And ideally, if I was a good developer, what I would do is what I commented in here. So what we are saying, we know that the conversation has been updated. So I say, see if we added any members. So the update is based on the users added to the conversation. If we have any um, new users added to the conversations, what I want you to do for each of these users, greet them 
with a personalized message that is hello with your name. This is also uh, assuming that there is some part, there is a flow in the application where we already uh, filled in few information. So we did log in to use that. So, and it will be hello baby or, you know, hello John, you're back, blah, blah, blah. But in my case, because I don't really need any of that in this simple um, application, all I'm saying, I'm saying, oh, if we do update this uh, conversation, just say hello. And then, so where I use this is in my post method. So <coughs> uh, the message controller and the dialogues are the two main things for a bot. The dialogues, think of dialogues are your interfaces, as your conversations, and the controller is the one holding all of that. So um, in the post message, we um, intercept every single activity coming to the bot, whether it's a message or a system activity. So when we get here, we have uh, defined types and we say what I want for that first um, interaction is, so I'm gonna not talk about this bit now, and all I'm saying is, oh, we got a message and it is a system message, so please execute this, which is what we've been seeing in here. And hopefully, where is that bit? Um, yeah, and that's the um, and that's what it is. And if I go, let's see. So if I go to the log, uh, 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 um, if I go to the log, I should be able to see. Yes. So if I go to the log, once I fire up the application, um, it says that the conversation is being updated, and that's how I do that. In V4, it's slightly different. So, um, do I have my cake bot? Right, so um, in V4, again, t that's why I said they are keeping both of them because I it is fairly different. So, in V4, instead of defining dialogues, we are just uh, defining bots, I bot. I still didn't look at the code on GitHub, but I'm assuming it's taking everything from that V3 and just, you know, making it easier for people to use. But in a very similar way, um, yeah. So here, uh, did the bot welcome the user? Yes. So in a very, it, it is similar. So now we are saying, uh, instead of saying a message, it's a turn. It has its turn. So in this turn, if, it's, um, if we are uh, updating the conversation, if we added any uh, members, do the same thing, just greet them. And, oh wow. I thought I will uh, have nothing to say. Okay, maybe I'm a bit late now. So, um, that is that first interaction. It is not different from anything else you will need to consider when building them, but just it's more uh, like coding wise, but it's just the design, putting the thought of how do you want to guide the users, what you want to do, and how um, you want them to use uh, the bot for the first time. Right. Um, now, the, in a very ideal world, what happened is you start using uh, the bot, the bot asks a question, the user answers the question, and so on, and so on, and so on, until we are done, right? But we are humans, so it's not going to be like that. That reminds me of my uh, conversations with my family whenever we are having uh, one big call and everyone is talking, I can't hear you, are you talking to me, Wh what, Wh who's there? That's exactly what would happen. So the expectation is to have what they call um, um, a sequel or a procedural flow. So everything goes question, answer, well, it doesn't have to be a question, 
but the bot would prompt the user to give a bit of information and the user would give the right information and so on until we achieve what we want to achieve. So, uh, this is my uh, tiny cake bot and here I'm asking for a cake. So what my bot is doing is just giving me a URL to a cake picture, which is better than nothing, right? Uh, no, I need to go back. Uh, if I do, um, which one is that? Okay, so if I click in here, I'm just gonna get my cake bot. Back to the code, right. So, remember, we are doing dialogues. Everything happens in dialogues. <coughs> um, the other thing I want to talk about is prompts, is in this um, sequen uh, uh, sequence <laughs> of things to say, we want to prompt the user, so we want to make it friendly, so we want to ask them questions, you know, in human language. That's why, uh, that's why we use the uh, prompts, uh, which is a simple string. So um, I have a class now that is called Cake dialog, notice that it is just a class, it's not inheriting from anything, so I didn't define it as a dialog yet. And I'm having my prompts here, what I need, so I want to ask about the cake. And so I have enumeration. This ignore is because if you don't put it somehow, the bot will ignore <laughs> the first option. And I don't think Microsoft has a fix for it yet, so they do recommend that you put ignore. So I have this one, which could show as a menu. So I literally, I could say, what's your guilt? And I could say cake, and the bot, <coughs> sorry, uh, the bot is smart enough to ask me, oh, by cake, did you mean ate a cake or want a cake? And also, I wouldn't have to write any UI. It's all part of it. So I will still see a menu without really uh, writing any code specifically, like UI code for a menu. And then we are building the form. So now we are building the dialog. It is a form builder. So what you need is this. Uh, Dialog, so we need dialogues and we need to specify it is a form flow. And what I'm saying is, so this one, this is like the message to start with, and then it will prompt the user for, um, for all these properties. And when we finish, when we get all of that, I am setting a bool here just to you know, to follow, to, to know what to do after that's done. So I am setting a pool that is saying confessed, I confessed to my bot, to true when I answer all the questions. And then we finish with also another friendly message that is, oh, let me see what I can do. So that's what we're going to uh, use. And we're going to use it in the message controller, of course. <coughs> In the message controller, now what we want is when a user enters an input. So the activity type that we need is message here. And as you can see, again, please ignore this bit for now. And here I'm saying, for this conversation, I want the activity to be make root dialogue. Because I'm not using the original root dialog, I'm, go uh, I'm going to use my cake dialog. Here, this is where I'm creating. Remember, the cake dialog is a simple class. So here I'm saying, I want it to be a dialog. I dialog, use I dialog, because I want to use this as a dialog. And we can use chains to add different dialogs and do different things. So I'm chaining that, I'm saying, from my cake dialog, build that form, which is that bit. This is build the form. 
want you to build that form and when you build the form I want you also as well to do the following when we finish when I finish building my form I want to get a cake so this is where I do the whole um, search on Bing APIs. It's when I finish that I say, please go and look for my cake. And this is the usual just trying to catching some exceptions if something happens in there. <coughs> in V4, <laughs> the whole thing between switching V3, V4, I was like, oh my god, how am I going to do that? So in V4, we talk about something called waterfall. So they changed the, if you want this like um, notion of uh, procedural conversation, uh, if you want to use prompts, it's called the waterfall. We um, define a waterfall and in your waterfall you define exactly what we want. So if I do have one of these, uh, where is my, do 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 it's in the greeting dialogue, yes. So it's, uh, it's like, it's very um, a human uh, language. So we identify the steps for a waterfall, what I want, so, uh, as you can see. So I want you to initialize that and then prompt for name, prompt for city, and then greet them. Basically we're saying, what's your name? And then we are adding them as dialogues. And what else do I want to say about that? Yes. So this is in an ideal world, just the conversation goes like that. Uh, also, as you can see in the emulator, it's quite nice. I'm not sure if it's clear because you can see the logs and all the uh, requests and responses. So you can see the traffic and you can see the JSON um, your JSON as well. So it gives you an idea when debugging and doing stuff with that. Does anyone remember this one? When this guy was, uh, so this guy, he's an expert. Um, uh, is, it, is he like a political expert? Something like that, I think. Yeah, or security thing. So he was giving uh, an interview for BBC, a very serious like business, from his house, from his office, when suddenly his, <laughs> his child opened the door and went inside. And then not only that, then his partner came in to take the child out. So it was quite a funny moment on the internet. And uh, so this is the reality of things. There is no just like one flow going on. We do have what we call um, interruptions. The user can interrupt the flow at any moment. Um, there are... Um, there are some... Um, how do you call them? like standard interruptions. For example, if you want to ask for help because you don't know how to use the bot or what commands, what can the bot offer you anymore. So I don't know, maybe you are trying to um, book a table in a restaurant and at some point you were confused about one of the steps, so you want help. Oh, you want to cancel, you changed your mind, so uh, you want to cancel. Some of these um, interruptions, uh, because they are quite standard, so um, uh, like you deal with them easier than others. And the way, um, it's, not, it's not complicated or, um, you know, elegant in any way. It is, so where is it? Yeah. So when we simply uh, get the message, we just to check if it says cancel or if it says help. Literally, it's a string uh, comparison. And based on that comparison, um, I say, um, again, you make it friendly. So I am creating a new activity because we are about to uh, leave that, the, the activity we are on now, so I need a new one, and the new one is just a simple activity that says, oh, so you changed your mind, and we add this, um, this new activity, we just add it to the conversation. So, uh, yeah, so 
As you can see in here, when it asked what kind of cake, and the moment I said cancel, it just knew, because obviously, it just knew what's going on, and instead of uh, continuing with that flow, it just cancelled what I was doing. And um, uh, where is my... Uh, oh, I have it somewhere in here. I can't see it anymore. But with V4 is the same thing. We just use uh, fancier words. We use the word. <laughs> it's just like you define a var that is called utterance, and you see your utterances. Oh, does it say cancel? Oh, does it say help? And based on that, just launch a new screen, which is not screen, but it's just a new activity. Now, these are not the only. Um, types of interruptions. These are like the easiest ones, actually. The other kinds of interruptions that we need to think about is when the um, users switch context completely. So you're not just cancelling or um, getting them a help menu, but when the user... So um, th um, in a more uh, complicated scenario, for example, um, let's say... Um, Maybe, maybe the restaurant example. So in the restaurant example, uh, booking a table would be a whole dialogue going through what time, how many people, blah, blah, blah. And uh, maybe you can also order food or check the menu, which would be completely separate dialogue, but they are both uh, living within the same uh, application. Uh, Imagine the bot, um, the user, sorry. Imagine the user completely switching the context. Like, so how many people are you expecting? Like, how many people are there, are there going to be there? And the user will be like, oh, by the way, can I see the menu? So um, these kind of um, in, um, oh, interruptions, we need to do uh, more than just checking um, um, the word and give them just a text message. Now we need to replace a dialogue by another one. The good thing is the cognitive services really help with that. So we can use uh, things like Lewis, which is the uh, language, language understanding uh, intelligent service, which should be able to um, hopefully understand what the user is saying and based on that, um, give the user switch to the right context, or the Q&A maker, which is questions, answers. So all of these help to make that switching context uh, smoother. And do I want to say anything else? Is there anyone giving a talk about how to use laptops properly? <laughs> I may need that. Right, so uh, to wrap up, it, you may not be using the um, MS uh, bot uh, SDK, SDK. You may want to use other technologies, or even you may want to use Node.js instead of C Sharp. Um, if anything, what I want you to take uh, out with uh, from this talk is the conversation flow whenever you're building a conversational UI it, it's the same concept think about the user there is no errors in there you can expect everything and anything from a user so how are you going to deal with that um, are you going to switch context uh, are you going to persist and keep asking users the same question again and again until you get the right answer. Think about that first time, the experience, how they are starting uh, to use your bot. Um, and then any of that, you take it using any technology, whether it's like um, if you want to use uh, Alexa, Google, or uh, other um, types of bots, it's all the same. It's just the principles you need to apply on different technologies. Thank you very much, Tak. I said I can say Tak. <laughs>